you're creating more of what you think is bad. And you don't even realize it just so you can get the cheap dopamine hit of dunking on somebody else that you find to be inferior. Hey, everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'd like to follow up on a video that I did uh, last week, actually, and I waited until this week to get all the verification paperwork and audio video recordings that I had requested to ensure that what I was saying was actually true. This video is Amazon accuses customer of racism and shuts down their smart home. Enough cloud junk. This video follows in the theme of my channel, which is that you should have control over what you purchase. Now, this channel really kind of talked about right to repair, the fact that you should be able to fix what you own, the company shouldn't be able to stop you from fixing what you own. And that's really one element under this larger umbrella of having control over what it is you buy, what it is that you pay for. And this is something that's going away very slowly, but continuously, and it's something that a lot of people who watch my channel are aggravated with. Whether we're talking about not being able to fix what it is that you bought and paid for, or whether we're talking about everything being a subscription so you don't actually own it, or just if you want to be able to fix something, having to get the manufacturer's proprietary tool to be able to do so. Even if you get a good part and you put it in, uh-uh-uh, that's the same part, but it has a different serial number, so it's not going to work. This is a serious problem. And one of the things that is actually the th funny thing, this is the theme of the next video I'm releasing on the main channel, is the fact that we are constantly infighting amongst ourselves. And the reason that these companies always win is because we spend time bickering and making fun of each other while allowing these companies, and admittedly in some cases governments, to rob us blind. So I just want to really highlight that with the comment that I chose to pin. In this video, I'm talking about somebody who has a smart home, and they had a little doorbell that said, excuse me, how can I help you? And while the doorbell said, excuse me, how can I help you? The person who was the Amazon delivery driver thought that a racist slur was said at him and he complained. And then the person who actually had this home had their Amazon account shut off, which was bad for their smart home because their smart devices connect to their Amazon account, which no longer works. So a smart home no longer worked. And he had a lot of stuff dependent on the, on the smart home. So he contacted Amazon and he tried to get his account reinstated. And it took considerably long, long period of time. He showed them all the videos. He showed them the audio recordings and said, look, this is a doorbell. When the driver showed up, he, it was a doorbell that said, excuse me, how can I help you? And it took him quite a while. Now, the comment over here is as follows. Sad that this channel is evolving to city bashing, anti-woke, outrage drivel. I don't blame it. It works well for Joe Rogan and the Algo. Good luck. My comment. This happened in a suburb, not a city. Wokeness or anti-wokeness has nothing to do with sovereign technology and not allowing a trillion dollar monopoly to control your home. Whether the B and BLM stands for Black Lives Matter or Blue Lives Matter to you is irrelevant to what matters. You and all people should have freedom from tyrants, regardless of your political affiliation. Whether the tyrant is a greedy sociopathic asshole who knows what he's doing or just an incompetent bureaucracy, it doesn't matter. We should all be alert so we avoid the pitfalls. Right to repair ties into this. Everything being a subscription ties into this. Your home communicating with Amazon servers ties into this. You are looking at this from an ideologically possessed, politically salty angle. And you're looking at the tiny pieces that are relevant to your outrage at what you perceive to be your political enemy, rather than focusing on the big picture. You heard the word racism, and as a result of it, you're associating that with people who complain about racism. The people who complain about people calling people racist tend to be the people who are your political opposition. Therefore, you are putting me in that basket of the people that are your political opposition who you dislike to leave this comment. And what I said is, as long as we continue to do this and fight amongst ourselves, the subscriptions will continue, the devices will be less repairable, and someone far else far, far away will have more control over what you own, more control over what you do, and more control over whether your services work in your home if somebody disapproves of what they think you said. Not what you actually said, what they think you said. We can choose to notice and stop tolerating it piece by piece until companies respect our freedom and sovereignty again, or we can bicker amongst ourselves to score points. The decision is ours. Have a good rest of your evening. And I genuinely believe this. Companies like nothing more than having Apple users bash Samsung users, and Samsung users bash Apple users, and then OnePlus users bashing Samsung users, when they're all removing the micro SD card slot, they're all removing the headphone jack, they're all removing the ability to reboot your device if you ever had it to begin with, and they're all removing your ability to unlock the bootloader and install a custom ROM. Every single one of these manufacturers is marching towards the same anti-freedom, anti-sovereignty place. And here's the thing. The reason they get away with it is because instead of us saying, hey, that's fucked up. They shouldn't be doing that. They shouldn't be taking away that ability from me. What we do is we laugh at each other. 
we pick fights with each other. You're anti-woke. You're woke. Oh, you're just mad because you think that that person's racist and they're not. You're mad because you actually are a racist and I called you what you honestly are. We are all arguing amongst ourselves. This person is likely, I'm going to take a wild guess, further to my left in the political spectrum. Would this person be happy if a delivery driver thought that you said something or like, I don't know, they heard somebody in that that sounded like they were of a different gender identity or sexual orientation and called their boss and said, I think these people are groomers. And now you didn't have a smart home. Would that make you happy? What if the people in the house, what if the voice that they heard or they he thinks he heard while they were walking up to the doorbell that they were in a state where abortion is illegal and you can actually get paid, you can actually get a bounty for reporting that somebody is trying to have an abortion illegally and they were talking about arranging an abortion in a state like Colorado and that person called their boss and their boss was, was you know, pro all these laws against abortion and decided, yeah, we're going to turn off that home. You have to understand, it doesn't matter what part of the political spectrum you're on. What matters to me in this particular instance is I don't believe, regardless of your affiliation, that somebody should have the ability or the power to disable crap in your home. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Well, this is a light switch. It's only light switches in this instance. It's lights and music and stuff like that. Okay. But right now, it's lights and music. Many people have thermostats that are cloud-connected. And those thermostats that are cloud connected, they're not connected to like a next cloud server in your closet. They're not connected to something that you're hosting yourself. You're connected to somebody else's server, often with an account. What if you're somebody that didn't even choose to have this put in your home, but you live in a new apartment and in this new construction, they're putting smart technology in it because they think that that'll look good on a brochure. One thing you may notice in many small cities across America that they are building housing like crazy. It's this paper mache, cheap looking housing that's designed to look like weird looking McMansions for yuppies where a lot of these places are having smart technology built into it, whether it's a smart lock, a smart thermostat, or anything else. It may not even be your choice if you're looking for housing in an area that has a shortage of housing to have this garbage built into your home. I visited somebody's apartment complex recently and they required an app to use their laundry room. An app that they had to sign into to use their laundry room based on the information that they had provided when they rented the apartment complex. I don't want to have to use an application to use my goddamn washer and dryer. And if I do have to use an account to use my washer and dryer, I don't want somebody to be able to turn it off because they think my doorbell said a dirty word. What if that gets turned off and you really need it to work? What if that gets turned off and you're not the type of person that understands that you could rip it off the wall and attach like the, 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 you know, the yellow wire to the black wire and now your heat turns on or something like that? What if that affects you in a serious way? doesn't matter where you are in the political spectrum. I believe that you deserve and have earned sovereignty and freedom. Now, you can say, and this is another thing that came up here, this person's a moron. They got a smart device in their home and they thought that they had any ability to have control over it. I understand where they're coming from. I really do. But in your heart of hearts, do you think that you're actually going to bring that person around to the right side? Or do you think that you're just going to alienate that person? Do you think that you're going to alienate that person and push them further away and push them into the corner of people that say, yeah, all those people over there, they're conspiracy theorists. Don't listen to them. If you say, hey, man, listen, something bad happened to you. Listen, this is why I personally don't want to use that stuff. Do you understand why we don't want to use that stuff now? And it's like, yeah, yeah, I kind of understand. Okay, point taken. I'm ripping this stuff out of my house versus, oh, my God, you're such a fucking, you're the retard. I can't believe that you actually put that in your home. You deserve to get screwed. You know what's going to happen? That person is now going to listen to people that call you a conspiracy theorist for pointing out the obvious, that having a bunch of somebody else's light switches, thermostats, uh, locks, microphones, cameras, two-way audio recorders in your home connected to somebody else's computer is not a great idea in 2023. What they're going to do is they're going to listen to other people that are in their own echo chamber who say, yeah, those guys are all conspiracy theorists, screw them. And because you have made him feel like he's othered, because you've made this guy feel like he's a, he's a piece of crap, because you've made him feel bad, he's not going to want to listen to you. He's going to listen to the people that say that you suck. He, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. The enemy of the person who is insulting me is my friend. And that person is going to be a person that's inside of an echo chamber that's actually telling him, yes, give more control of your life away to Apple, Google, Amazon, and everybody else. You're creating more 
of what you think is bad and you don't even realize it just so you can get the cheap dopamine hit of dunking on somebody else that you find to be inferior. One thing I've mentioned so many times in this channel is that all of these companies wind up walking in lockstep, following behind the companies that get away with taking away control over what it is that you own. Once one company gets away with it and makes more money for doing it, every company follows their lead. So if you genuinely want to live in a world where you have control over what you own, is it not in your best interest to be nice and understanding to the people that got screwed so that they're open to coming over to your side rather than hardening in their position. Because the way the lizard brain works, the way this stuff usually functions is when you attack somebody, that person is going to harden into whatever the position it is they already had, even if they don't agree with it. I've seen people do this all the time, where they may not even necessarily think that what they're saying is a good idea, but they're offended at the fact that you have hurt them, you have harmed them, you have made them feel small, so now they feel the need to defend that position, to defend their honor, their ego, and their dignity. Does that help you if you really want to see companies that do this crash and burn so that you have the ability to self-host and self-manage your own instances of all these software into the future? You see, in so many issues, in politics, sociology, technology, we would prefer to get the cheap dopamine hit of dunking on somebody that is our inferior so that we can feel superior in a cheap way rather than actually come together and create positive change. And as long as this occurs, I, I guarantee you, nothing is going to change. This is also something that I went over in my Gigabyte video. LOL, the fools that didn't research will end up with the crap brands and products. I didn't even bother looking at a Gigabyte GPU, even if it claimed 50% less priced other GPUs. How people can still be buying shifty brands shows us the fact that a lot of us are still absolute fools and don't want to spend time researching for the best value on the product. And my comment was as follows. This is why we fail as a society. Rather than blame the person screwing you, we make fun of the person who got screwed for not scouring niche obscure Discord servers to learn that this issue even exists. As long as this mindset persists, we will continue to get screwed and we will never win. People like you perpetuate this cycle. The bean counters who make these decisions on how to deal with customers after the fact, or who make the design choices that result in people pissing away $2,000, are laughing reading this right now because they know as long as we are busy tearing each other apart and at each other's throats, they can stay busy and wealthy ripping us off. As long as we're at a point where we're saying, you know what? I know that you did research on Tom's hardware and Anantech or Extreme Systems Forums or DFI Street or okay, I'm kind of showing my age at this point. But you get my point. As long as we are busy saying you just didn't read enough, what you really need to do is go to this soldering Discord server to notice that the ratio of Asus cards to Gigabyte cards that were getting fixed was like one to five or something like that because you didn't go to that niche Discord server and figure out that this cracking thing was a problem and spent eight hours of research before you bought the card every single single day, well, it, it's you that's a fool. It's not the company. It's, it's not the fact, it's not that we should hold people accountable who screw people. We should constantly look to belittle ourselves. This person over here is leaving this comment because it makes him feel better. He is a tree real man, a man that does research and learns and has knowledge before he buys something, unlike the pleb dumbass that's my neighbor. I am smarter than him. I am better than him. I am more of a man and a provider than he is. It's just ridiculous. And you see a lot of the comments in that thread. And yes, I understand. Trust me, you, I get it. I understand the desire to kind of want to do this a little bit to somebody who decides that they are going to have a multi-trillion dollar company like Amazon, like Apple, like Google control everything that's going on in their home. I get it. But there's a way to get these things across so that people are actually more likely to change. Like there was one instance that I went over a while ago, why privacy matters. Google reports customer to police for pedo behavior over doctor photos. In this instance, this is just a dude that was using Gmail. I mean, how many of you use Gmail? How much do you want to bet that all of the people that are making fun of this guy for having Amazon in his smart home, how much do you want to bet that these people also use Gmail? Show of hands. How many of you use Gmail at one point in time? I don't use it as my main, but I have one. I used it for a really long time. I don't anymore. I don't, doesn't, you don't use it for any of the important stuff, but I used to. You know what they did? This guy sent a picture to a doctor when the doctor requested a photo of their kid that had a rash, had a problem, had a medical issue. And because of COVID, the office wasn't able to see them. So they asked for a picture. Takes a picture, snaps it, sends it over. Google flags it. Now you'd think that there'd be a human review system. 
You know what the human review system did? The human review system looked at it and said, let's look in context at your other photos. Oh, this child, this two or three year old kid was in bed with the mother and the mother didn't have her top on. And that Karen, that horrible HOA person, that person that's probably one of those people that you read about on Reddit that thinks that people who have children are ruining the planet and ruining the earth and are just these horrible, ugh, are, are, saw that photo of a, of a mother hugging and embracing their offspring and thought, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that puts it in context. These people must be child abusers and report them to the police. How many of the people that you think are shaming this person for using Amazon use Gmail? That could have been any one of them. Every one of us probably uses a product or a service or is the resident of a local government that at some point in time could do something that is incompetent and tyrannical that could screw with our lives. And when these things happen, when they are brought to your attention, we should stop tearing each other down and rather, A, be reassuring in a positive way. B, try to build each other back up. But above all, hold the people accountable that did the screwed up thing rather than ridicule the person who got screwed. As long as we continue to ridicule the person who got screwed, nothing's going to change. And trust, here's the thing. I've, I've been close to doing that before. I really have, and I have to catch myself. You may notice in all these videos that I do about Apple's products, the design flaws, the way they treat the consumer, the way they treat the user. In these videos, I'm not saying the customer is an idiot, blah, blah, blah. I'm always keeping it to what they did, how they treated their customer poorly, how they are tr taking customers that care about them, that like their products, that want to give them money, that are loyal, and screwing them over. I always make sure that in these instances that my aggravation, my rage, my rar is for the person that's doing the screwing of the victim and not the person who is the victim of getting screwed. We can't win any of this. We can't take back any of our freedom. We can't take back any of our sovereignty. We can't live in a world where we actually own the shit that we buy, not some stupid company, unless we're willing to stop tearing each other down. I just thought that was worth mentioning. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'm going to read through some of your chat, and then I'm going to get out of here because today I did 16 squats at 225 pounds. I did seven bench press at 235 pounds. I did 20 pull-ups twice. I did six curls with a 90-pound bar, which is kind of a bitch thing. I actually got up to 80 last time. And I got six skull crushers in with 95 pounds on a straight bar. I am feeling yoked, but I'm also 34 and probably have low testosterone by now, which I'm actually getting checked out two weeks from now. So I'm also dead tired because I have absolutely, I, I, have, I have nothing running through my veins besides, I don't know, contempt for Apple. <laughs> That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learn something.